number 16, silane, which is SIH4, phosphine, which is PH3, and hydrogen sulfide, which is H2S, melt at negative 185 degrees Celsius, negative 133 degrees Celsius, and negative 85 degrees Celsius, respectively. What does this suggest about the polar character and intermolecular attractions of the three compounds? All right. So let's just list these out. So we have silane, which is SiH4. We have phosphine, which is PH3. And we have hydrogen sulfide, which is H2S. And let's just maybe bring these out a little bit more. So we have SiH4, we got PH3, and we have H2S. Now they did tell us the melting points respectively. Um, SiH4 has a melting point of negative 185 degrees Celsius. Then we come up to negative 133 degrees Celsius, and we have negative 85 degrees Celsius. And we just have to suggest about what's going on with the polar character and intermolecular attractions that are in this compound or these compounds. Well, just know that your melting point and boiling point are very, very close to, closely linked with the number of intermolecular forces that your molecule has. Now, the more intermolecular forces that you have, the higher the melting and the higher the boiling point. Now, it seems that as we're going from left to right, we can say that SiH4 has the lowest, right? Negative 185 uh, is the lowest number out of these three, and negative 85 is the highest number. So we are going from left to right here in terms of melting point. We know that SiH4 has the lowest melting point. And H2S has the highest melting point. Okay. Now, as you're going and picking up intermolecular forces, you're gaining in melting point. So, as we are going from left to right, we can assume or we can suggest that you are gaining... Whoop, we are gaining in intermolecular forces or intermolecular attractions is the wording that they use. So I'll give the, the wording right back. Intermolecular attractions. Now, if we actually drew out these molecules, right, with the Lewis structures, we would see that SiH4 is indeed completely symmetrical. You have a silicon in the middle surrounded by four hydrogens. There are no lone pairs in the middle. So this molecule is completely nonpolar. So the only intermolecular forces that SiH4 has is uh, dispersion forces because on a grand scheme of thing, all molecules or all compounds have dispersion forces by default. So that means that pH3 would also have dispersion forces, and so would H2S. So there's no difference there. But now, if we just draw out what pH3 looks like and what H2S looks like, it might give us an idea as to why we're gaining in intermolecular attractions as we go from left to right. P in the middle, surrounded by three hydrogens, but you gotta have the octet rule, so the phosphorus has one lone pair in the middle. As opposed to H2S, you have a sulfur in the middle, bounded by the two hydrogens, and you have two lone pairs in the middle. Now just know that if you have a polar molecule, you can automatically spot out a polar molecule by seeing that your central atom if it has lone electrons, which means that it has the dots. And for both pH3, I have a central atom that has dots. And for H2S, I have a central atom that has two dots. So just by seeing that, 
phosphine, pH 3, would be classified as polar. And so would H2S. And if you have a polar covalent molecule, you have a new intermolecular force, which is a dipole-dipole attraction. So these two have dipole-dipole attractions. Just to put it into perspective, the other one, SiH4, does not have dipole-dipole attractions because this molecule is symmetrical. It's nonpolar. And then... For hydrogen bonding, which is the most specific intermolecular force, you just have to have hydrogens that are bound to either a nitrogen, an oxygen, so OH, or an FH bond. But in all three of these, I have my hydrogens bound to a silicon. That doesn't make the cut. Hydrogen bound to phosphorus. That doesn't make the cut. And sulfur to hydrogen. That doesn't make the cut as well. So unfortunately, none of these have the hydrogen bonding. But it can kind of give us a hint as to why um, SiH4 has the lowest melting point because it only has dispersion. The other two have more intermolecular forces, therefore making it have a higher melting point. Now just know that the more polar you are, the more lone pairs, the higher the melting point as well. So since pH3 only has one lone pair of electrons, it is less polar. Even though it's classified as a polar molecule, it is less polar. But since your sulfur compound has two lone pairs, on the scale of polarity, this would be more polar. So it says, what does this suggest about the polar character and intermolecular attractions? You're gaining in intermolecular attractions, and you're also going to be gaining in polar character. Because the more lone electrons that you have in the center, the more polar that molecule is going to be. So this basically answers the question. As you're going from a low melting point to a high melting point, you're gaining in those attractions and you're gaining in polar character. And that is the end. So let's just box this answer off. And we are done with this question. Oh boy, what happened there? Oh boy, I guess I'll just do that. That's perfect. Beautiful, 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 beautiful. I guess we'll just move this over a little bit. I guess move this over. And... What a question. Okay, hopefully this makes sense. Thank you for viewing the video. If you want to help us out, please press the subscribe button. Just gets the word out there that this educational YouTube channel exists. I hope you're all doing well out there. Um, stay safe, stay, stay healthy, and I hope you guys are having a great day. Keep studying hard. I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.